St George's Hill Golf Club is almost unique in that uh, in 1913 a local builder bought the 965 acres that comprise St George's Hill, built the clubhouse uh, in the style of that era and then employed the services of Harry Shaplin Colt to design the golf course. To fund the building of the golf course he then built another hundred or so houses in a similar style to the clubhouse that we see behind us. That's an almost American idea 104 years ago, which is quite remarkable. It's a great honour to work on a course with such historical significance. And we, we treat it like almost working on a, on a listed building if you're an architect. Well, the strategy of this hole is, is certainly uh, to miss the bunker on the front left, as Colt originally intended it. When we looked at all the original plans, you could definitely see that that bunker was, was bigger. And looking at the landform, you could see where, where the old bunker used to sit. Over time, the face of the bunker had been lifted by sand splash, so we wanted to make the mounding more natural and then bring the heather back into it. We're in a heathland environment here, so over time the heath has started to decline, so we've really tried to um, get the heather back and, and make it the overriding landscape feature of the course. So here there were two bunkers and we decided to make it one larger bunker, more in style of the uh, original cult design. And what, what we'll see when we're up here is actually it doesn't look as intimidating as it does from the tee. On the right side, the bunker was, was not sitting well with the, with the natural gradient of the land, so we reshaped it to blend in with the, with the gradient more and fit in with the green complex. A golf course is a living creature, you know, plants grow, people play golf, they dig up with, them, with, with their clubs, it changes all the time. But in particular, the trees obviously have grown a vast amount over 100 years. We note when we look at the old aerials, it's very clear that the sand bunkers have shrunk pretty dramatically. Colt built very large bunkers around here, which matches the scale of the landscape. So over time, the, the ninth hole had changed a bit from the original Colt design. So what we've tried to do is, is uh, restore the, the strategy of, of driving close to the bunkers, uh, which gives you a nice line into the green. So we enlarged the first fairway bunker on the left and then put an additional bunker further up at about 260 yards, 270 yards, which is very visible from the tee. As you go further up the hole, the bunker just short of the green in the approach has been heathered and enlarged and made a lot more visible. This tee shot off the ninth is one of the most spectacular tee shots in golf. So we hope and we, we think we've restored that magnificent feeling of this hole. Off the tee, what we tried to do, and, and we, when we noticed through the historical study, is that the bunkers had shrunk. We enlarged the two existing bunkers, left and right, to their original form and added heather, but also we added a bunker further up on the left at about 260 yards carry to reinforce that risk and reward. The best approach into this green complex is from the left side of the fairway. The problem here with the first green at St George's Hill is that it was rebuilt from its original location, but when it was rebuilt it was built in a bowl. It was a very flat green and it didn't drain well and it wasn't performing to the standard of the other greens. What we tried to do is, is think of something sort of in between. I, tw I wanted to lift it higher up into the hill and make it blend in with the hill more naturally than what it was doing. So the, this green is actually probably a metre, 1.2 metres higher than the existing green was. We wanted to run a bit of a tear through the green, as many of the greens here do have tears through them, which for Colt is not that common, but on this course, many, many, many of the greens have tears, and the tears run in the line of direction of play, which is very interesting as well. When we look at the green complex, we've put far more heather up on the mound, um, to the right, and then it's more naturalised form of landscape around this green. We almost want it to appear as though 
the bunker has been sort of scratched out of a heather mound or a heather landscape of how it would have been built. Certainly in the grand scale of what we were trying to achieve with the bunkering and the heather, I think is back. I think that the current work has created the wow, but has never run away from the original cult legacy. And I think it will allow us now to get on with more work. I'm putting all our trust in Tim Lobb, <laughs> absolutely all of it.